Hi, I'm Andy Pitts. Welcome to my workshop. About a month ago, I started having a little problem with the shop bot. While I'd be cutting a piece, suddenly the machine would forget where the zero point is in the Y direction. The bit was cutting this rope pattern. And at this point, the, uh, the bit went ahead and you know, went over the rope like it should. And at that point, the software said, okay, move on back to here to do another pass. But the gantry didn't move. The software thought it had moved. The thought software thought the bit had moved back over here, but it hadn't. So when the software said, okay, let's do another cut, the bit really started out here instead of here. And it went boom. And it hopped its way all the way across my piece. We went ahead and swapped the leads out for the Y motor with the X motor and the problem then started to manifest itself in the X direction. So the little stepper motor here on the end would start to, to hang up. So we knew that the problem wasn't the motors themselves because the problem would move from Y to X simply by switching the leads on the control board. So the, the first uh, the first assumption was that it might be the driver, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And if the driver in that Y position was uh, faulty, that would cause the problem. We went ahead and replaced that driver, but the problem still persisted, which told us then that the problem was probably in the control board. The folks at ShopBot tell me that having this control car, uh, board go bad is very rare. And it may well be, in my case, due to the fact that we live at the end of the uh, electrical grid. And so I went ahead and installed an uninterruptible power supply that's uh, more than enough to feed both the computer and the shop bot. I'm now around at the back of the machine. And there is an instruction that you can get from ShopBot. It's called the Desktop DT2418 Driver Service. And it explains how to get in here, how to get the control board out, and how to get the drivers out. Now the first thing that you're told to do is to unplug. You're also told to be in an anti-static environment. So I'm just, while I've got this plugged in, I'm just touching the machine a lot to use the equipment ground to help, you know, remove any static charge that I might have. And then I go ahead and unplug this. I also unplug the USB cable from, from my computer because that USB cable will provide power to the control card. I take out the two screws that hold this plastic cover in place and the plastic cover can just be gently removed. Here's the Y stepper motor. Here's the control board. And this is the controller card. Okay, the controller card, that's where the USB cable plugs into. But it's the control board that we're gonna go after right now. So to get at the control board, I simply have to remove four screws. It helps for me to use a magnetic screwdriver so I don't lose the screws. This is where the X motor lead connects, the Y motor lead, and the Z motor lead. So when we were doing our troubleshooting, we swapped these wires over to here and these wires over to here. And when the problem then migrated to the x-axis, we knew the problem was some, something with the signal coming out of this particular connection here and not the motors themselves. Okay, to remove this board, you just gently move it back and forth because there's pins on the back that are connecting into the drivers. Here, here are the three drivers, the Z, the Y and the X, and the board has, you can see, plug-ins that plug straight into the pins on those drivers. Those drivers are attached to the aluminum here with Phillips head, or excuse me, with Allen screws. Take these two screws out. Here's one, here's the other. And then all you have to do is just carefully peel the driver off of this dielectric tape that's mounted to the back. And that dielectric tape keeps the drivers from grounding out on the, 
aluminum. So you just gently pry the driver off and then replace the new driver. And here I've got one. You simply replace that onto the tape so that it sticks and then put the screws back in. I always noticed the Z-axis made a lot of noise. Uh, it turns out that noise is called resonance in the actual stepper motor. And it had to do with a, an adjustment you could make on the driver. So if you look at this driver, I'll try to get really close. There's a little screw right here that you can use a tiny screwdriver to get into. And that's a potentiometer adjustment. You can go ahead and adjust that all the way clockwise to a stop and then back off 1 16th of a turn. And that's the ideal position for that pot on these drivers. That's also in this written instructions I was telling you about. When I made that adjustment uh, about a half a year ago, my Z uh, noise just stopped. The machine ran extremely smoothly, so I've adjusted all three of my drivers that way. Okay, now I want to get at the control card, uh, control board, so I need to remove the control card. The way to do that, you go ahead and unplug the ribbon cable from the control board between the control card and the control board. And then there's a couple of Phillips head screws on the back of the control board that hold the control card in place. And while I'm doing this, I'm trying to avoid touching any metal contacts on the board, again for the static electricity reason. Okay, so there's one screw and two screws. Okay, at this point, I can take my control board, or control card, excuse me, and simply remove it and just set that aside. Okay, the next step is to be to, to remove all these leads. And before I do that, I want to take my brand new card so I can swap a lead at a time and not get them mixed up. It also might help to take a photograph of this so that if I do make a, or forget <laughs> where a lead goes, I can just look back at the photograph. The new tr control card comes in an anti-static bag. At this point, it's also useful to tell you that there's another document on the ShopBot website. It's called Replacing the, De the Desktop Control Board. And it's got nice color pictures that show you the wiring. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start taking these wires off and transferring them one by one. That's one wire. That's the last screw. So make sure everything's tight. Check it against my notes. Okay, then the next step is to connect the control card. You don't want to put a monster grip on these screws. They're just designed to keep this plug from falling off. Okay, and then connect the ribbon cable, making sure we get both rows of pins. Okay, we got both rows of pins there. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the control board. This is where you want to be very careful. You're lining this up to the pins that are on the, on the drivers. But you can't see them. So what I do is, is I get all four of my screw holes aligned. And then that feels right and it pushes on. There we are, we're all lined up. Now I just go ahead and reinstall those four screws. Okay, last thing to connect is the USB cable into the controller card. Okay, so everything's in place. Tuck the wires in, put the cover on. Let's go ahead and check it out, run it through its uh, paces. So far, so good. Okay, good movement on the X and the Y. Let's check. Uh, okay, got that all hooked up right. 
Let's go ahead and see if the spindle works okay. Now well, the spindle works too, so I guess I got everything hooked up right. We'll go ahead and cut and see how it works. So I hope, uh, I hope by running through this uh, in my machine, I've helped you if you have to do similar work in your machine. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.